Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biology playlist. In previous videos, we have talked about mitosis, meiosis, spermatogenesis, oogenesis, fertilization, and today it's time for cleavage and blastulation. With that said, now let's get started. Please watch these videos in order. Okay, what is fertilization? Fertilization is when the female gamete and the male gamete, well, uh, hug each other, to put it mildly, and the steps of fertilization are as follows. Capacitation, acrosoma reaction, polyspermy block, completion of meiosis II, and then the zygote formation. After zygote formation, now it's time for cleavage. Oh yeah, medicosis, I know cleavage. Not that kind of cleavage, Nick. This kind of cleavage, the thing that takes you from a zygote to an embryo. A zygote has just one cell, we call this unicellular. Embryo is anything more than one cell. So here is the cleavage, zygote, just one, and then two cells, and then four cells, and then the morula, which is between 12 and 16 cells. Morula is Latin for mulberry. Not to be confused with the blueberry muffin rash seen in congenital rubella syndrome. Integration, baby. Okay, tell me more about cleavage. When does it happen? Just following fertilization. Where? In the fallopian tube. But how? By mitosis. Oh, one, and then two, and then four, and then eight, and then 16, etc., etc., and so on and so forth. Have you noticed the size of the circle did not increase? It's just the number of the cells within that structure that have increased. But as you know, the same size of the circle, same size, same size, same size. So the total size of the embryo did not change. However, two things did change. The nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio and the surface area to volume ratio. Let's start by nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio. What the flip is this? Here is your beautiful cell. Imagine that I had a cell like this with a lovely nucleus. All right. Now, increased nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio will be like this. Look at what happened to the nucleus. Oh, the nucleus has increased relative to the size of the surrounding cytoplasm. And this is called increased nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio. Which makes perfect sense when you realize that the size of the embryo did not change. However, instead of one nucleus, now we have about 16 nucleus. So, of course, nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio increased. Moreover, since these cells are getting more active and more active and more active, even within a single cell, the nucleus to cytoplasmic ratio is getting bigger. So this can happen intracellularly and intercellularly. Next, increase surface area to volume ratio. Look at this cell right here. It's a beautiful cell. And then look at this right here. Did the volume inside the cell change? No, it's the same volume of the cytoplasm here. What change is the surface area? Oh yeah, these invaginations in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, crests and troughs, etc. These will increase the surface area relative to the volume. And have you noticed that the nucleus also increased? So we have increased nucleus cytoplasmic ratio and increased surface area to volume ratio. Embryo is anything greater than one cell. We have two types of cleavage, determinate cleavage and indeterminate cleavage. To understand the difference, let me explain the difference between free will and determinism. Free will is a philosophy that says that human beings are free to choose. You can go this way, this way, or any other way. Determinism suggests that, that you are determined by your genes, your environment, etc. You're just going this way, it's not your choice. Even when you think it's your choice, it's not up to you, baby. But what the flip does that have to do with biology of reproduction? A lot, actually. Free will is what I call indeterminate cleavage. Determinism is the determinate cleavage. What does that mean? In free will, you are free to choose. Yeah, so this cell can say, I can give rise to any cell that I want. I can be a muscle, I can be a nerve, I can be a cartilage, I can be a tendon. I can even be the entire organism. Oh, okay. How about determinants? Um, you can only give rise to one type of cell and one type of cells only. Example, yo, Tiffany, you're gonna be a muscle, but I wanna be a nerve. Shut up, you will be a muscle. It is not up to you. It is determinate cleavage. Hey, Tommy, it's me, your cousin from Boston. You're gonna be an ear. But I want to be a nose. Shut up, it's not up to you. It is determinate cleavage. But you, Justin, you can choose whatever you want. If you want to be an entire organism, go for it. Now, let me paint a picture for you. And what is better in painting a picture about cleavage than the Hodge twins? I mean, look at all of this beard action right here. Imagine this is one zygote, right? And then the zygote, the one cell, became two cells. That's true. 
The Hodge twins are monozygotic twins. They are identical twins. What does monozygotic mean? They originated from one zygote. Okay, so at a certain point, they were just two cells. Oh yeah, that makes sense. This cell right here will become Keith. And this cell right here will become Kevin. So the question is, do you think this is determinate cleavage or indeterminate cleavage? Well, if I give rise to the entire organism, therefore by definition, I have to be indeterminate cleavage. Hashtag free will. And to remember that this is indeterminate cleavage, which is free will, just remember this bird which symbolizes freedom. Because on your exam, you will not remember any facts, only my stupid jokes. Moreover, monozygotic twins are always identical in sex, male and male, or female and female. You cannot get male plus female from a monozygotic twins. It ain't gonna happen, baby. And this is how you teach about biology. Yeah. After cleavage comes blastulation. So from here to here, this is cleavage. But now this is blastulation. Why do you call it blastulation? Because this is the formation of the blastocyst or the blastula. All right, what does the word cyst mean? A word cyst means cavity. Oh, you see this cavity right here? Yeah, it's a cavity and it's filled with fluid. What does the word blast mean? Blast can mean two things. It can mean growth. Oh yeah, no kidding. Of course we are growing. We're growing, it's getting bigger because we are making an embryo and then a fetus and then you. The word blast in medicine can also mean immature and there is a difference between blast and sight. Blast is an immature cell. Sight is a mature cell. Example, erythroblast versus erythrocyte. Erythroblast is the immature red blood cell but erythrocyte is the mature red blood cell. Tell me more about this blastocyst. It is made of inner cell mass, which is inner, and outer cell mass, which is outer, no kidding. And then there is a cavity. The cavity is known as the blastocyst cavity or the blastoceal. In the good old days, which were not so good, it was used to be written like this, seal, blastoceal. But the O and the E is not two letters, it's just one letter. Because some woke textbooks, including Davidson's Internal Medicine, God help us, write it O and E as separate letters. Unfortunately, this British textbook does not understand English, and I'm here an Egyptian dude correcting them. We are in trouble. At any rate, the inner cell mass are called the embryoblast. What's blast? Growing, growing embryo or immature embryo. Oh, so the embryoblast will later give rise to the embryo itself. You came from an embryoblast. Okay, got it. How about the outer cell mass? That's the trophoblast. And the trophoblast will give you the chorion, which will later give you the placenta. So your placenta came from the trophoblast, but you yourself came from the embryoblast. When I was 17 years old, I asked my mother, where is my placenta? Because let's say, God forbid, I acquire a disease in the future and I wanted my stem cell. Can you please give me my placenta? And my mom said, unfortunately, the doctor threw it in the trash. Thanks, doc. So, fertilization is what? When the female gamete and the male gamete hug each other. And then when they fuse, they give you a zygote. And then the zygote will undergo cleavage. All of this happens in the fallopian tube. After this, what's going to happen? Blastulation and implantation. What is implantation? Attachment of the embryo to the wall of the uterus. How does it get attached to the wall of the uterus? Well, remember the outer cell mass, aka the trophoblast, which is gonna give you the chorion, which will give you the placenta. This is how the baby gets attached to mommy's womb's wall. Quick question, where does fertilization happen? Well, it happens in the fallopian tube. Good, but not excellent. Well, in the ampulla of the fallopian tube, in the widest area of the fallopian tube. Excellent. Now, why do we call it the fallopian tube? It is thanks to an Italian scientist known as Gabriel Fallopio. He discovered the fallopian tube. He discovered or contributed to the discovery of the cochlea and the vestibule of your inner ear. He discovered the aqueductus fallopii and the fallopian ligament. Now, in the comment section, please let me know what the flip is the aqueductus fallopio or the fallopian ligament. If you want to download these illustrated notes that I present in these videos, you can download these biology notes for free at medicosisperfectionaries.com. Also on the same website, you can get my brand new acid-base imbalance course. 
It teaches you about the acid base from the biochemistry standpoint, from a physiology standpoint, from an internal medicine standpoint. We'll talk about the normal kidney physiology, the diuretics, pharmacology, and all of the HAGMA, the NAGMA, the metabolic alkalosis, respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, the delta-delta, the anion gap, the stool, a smaller gap, everything. And if you want to study pharmacology, the first thing that you should study is autonomic pharmacology. Please do not start with pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. You will hate yourself. And you can download this course at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. And here is a 40% discount code for you. Use promo code ACIDBASE at checkout. It's available for the next five students only. Step number one, fertilization, and then the zygote, and then the cleavage, and then the blastocyst. After the blastocyst, you will have the bilaminar embryo, two layers, and then the trilaminar embryo, three layers. Let's review the male ejaculatory pathway from pycmonic. All right, remember the mnemonic, seven up. What is the S? Seminiferous tubule in the testicles. After this, you have the epididymis, and then the vas deferens. Perfect. After this, you have the ejaculatory ducts. What is the N? N is for nothing. After that, you have up. U is the urethra, and the P is the penis, or the male copulatory organ, because we gotta keep it G-rated here, because YouTube is for little kids. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense.